Today we're going to talk about how to look at a molecule and determine if the molecule is polar or nonpolar. So, quick review. First, we said we put molecules into two categories. First, ionic or covalent. And then we split covalent into polar and nonpolar. So, quickly, uh, nonpolar is when you have equal sharing and there's a low electronegativity difference. Polar covalent is when you have unequal sharing and there's a medium electronegativity difference. And then, of course, ionic is when you actually transfer one electron, electron to another and there's a high electronegativity difference. And this typically involves a metal and a nonmetal, where the electron goes from the metal to the nonmetal. So, polar or nonpolar molecules. So, we talked about polar versus nonpolar molecules. So, polar molecules will have what we call an unsymmetrical three-dimensional distribution of charge. So you have to draw it and look at the entire molecule to determine if those charges balance out. Non-polar and the polar molecules will also have a uh, polar bond. So a polar molecule also has polar bonds in it. Now non-polar molecules have a symmetrical distribution of charge. So there's not one end that's negative or one end that's positive. Now there's two different categories. Polar bond, you could have polar bonds that cancel or you could have just completely nonpolar bonds altogether. So polar things, think of the key word here is unsymmetrical, and then nonpolar things are symmetrical. So polar means they're unsymmetrical, means there's a partial negative and a partial positive, but things that are symmetrical, there's no positive or negative anywhere in the particle, that, or if there is, they cancel out. So let's review quickly bond polarity and molecular shape determine if the molecule is polar. So we've talked about, like for example, HCl would be a polar bond. And also a polar molecule because there's only two things. There's a negative end and then there's a positive end. So that's a polar bond. It's also a, also a polar molecule. So bond polarity is when a bond has a partial negative on one atom, and also don't forget that word partial. A lot of you want to say negative. It's a partial negative. A, a negative we refer, reserve that for ionic compounds. So there's a partial negative charge on one atom and a partial positive on the other. Now we do not remember we denote the partial with the lowercase delta. The molecular shape is the arrangement of the atoms in 3D. So that's something we need to look at. This molecule is polar, but it's only one bond, and so that's polar as well. So for molecular polarity, we need to look and see if the, there's uh, asymmetry in the particle. Here's two good examples of that. Here's a polar, polar bonds and a nonpolar molecule. An example of this, this would be carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. So this, would, this middle atom would represent the carbon. All the ones around it would represent the four chlorines. What happens? In this situation, for example, the chlorine is more electronegative, and so the electrons are pulled toward the chlorine, and the carbon is more positive. But in this three-dimensional structure, all of those carbon-chlorine bonds actually cancel out, and so we say that's symmetrical. So this entire bond is what we call nonpolar. So we did a lab to indicate nonpolar, we're just going to write NP to abbreviate nonpolar. A polar molecule would be if we have something like this, CH. 3Cl. So what happens, we have three hydrogens here and one chlorine here. These hydrogens do not cancel out that chlorine, so we see that say this is asymmetrical. So there's a negative end and a positive end that do not cancel. So this is a polar molecule. So this slide right here is actually extremely important because this is a basic summary of everything I'm trying to teach you in this in this one uh, video for today. The difference between a polar molecule versus a nonpolar molecule. In a polar molecule, they the charges don't cancel. You've got a negative end that doesn't cancel with the positive end. So there's no canceling here. So the negative end does not cancel with that positive. But in a nonpolar molecule, nonpolar means no poles. There may be negatives and positive, but they cancel. And so there's symmetry. Well, let's keep going at some other examples. So we see this one it has a negative side and a positive side. Uh, and then what happens if we put all these things, if electrons are not distributed equally, the molecule is polar. So, for example, let's go back to this for a moment. If we put this in a electric field, they would line up. The negative ends of the polar molecule would align with the positive plate, the positive ends with the negative plate. 
a polar molecule has a, a partially positive side and a partially negative side, and uh, highlighting the word partially. That, that means this is part of a covalent bond, meaning two nonmetals, and not an ionic bond. For example, water is an extremely important polar molecule. Water has a negatively charged end where the oxygen, oxygen is located. Remember, oxygen is the second most electronegative element. And a, par a partially charged, positive charged end next to the hydrogen atoms. That means water has a lot of properties that is very important to life. It helps dissolve ions and different things that are important for nutrition and living systems. And that's why water is so important. Uh, so we see for this, another way to indicate this is we could do an arrow. The positive side of the arrow is next to the positive portion of the molecule, and the, ne and the arrow is pointing in the negative end. The arrow labels a molecular polarity, not just a polarity of the bonds, but of the whole molecule. It shows electrons are mostly by the oxygen atom. So this molecule, not just the bonds, the molecule is polar. Let's keep going. So how, what would happen if these molecules, if you put them in an electric field? they would do the same thing a diatomic substance would do if it was polar. All the negative ends would line up against a positive plate, we see all the negative ends there, and all the positive ends would line up against a negative plate. So here we see they're unevenly distributed and there they aligned. So polar molecules have two poles. One is partially positive and one is partially or slightly negative. This is an example of the molecule ammonia. Ammonia is a gas, NH3. So in ammonia, we have we have three. I'm not sure why the three is not saying. We have three hydrogens, and the three hydrogens are here, and the three hydrogens are partially positive. The nitrogen is partially negative. That there's no way those can cancel. It is a ace. Uh, it is a, an asymmetrical. It is not symmetrical molecule, and so this means this is a polar substance. This is. N H three ammonia. Okay, let's keep going. A couple other examples. Uh, so there's a negative end and a positive end. Water. Here I'm showing that you that again. Water has two polar OH bonds. The the hydrogens are more positive. The oxygen is more negative. And so the entire molecule is more positive toward the hydrogen side, more negative more toward the oxygen side. So there's a greater electron density of those, just those valence electrons next to the oxygen. So electrons are not distributed evenly in the water molecule, so we say the water molecule is polar. So polar means asymmetrical. Uh, the negative pole is at the oxygen. The oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so the electrons are pulled more toward that. Uh, also, there are two lone pair electrons on oxygen as well, so that makes oxygen that makes it a polar polar molecule. So there's a negative end, and then there's a positive end right there. So what I'd like to do in closing, I'm going to show you two different slides here. We're going to label things as polar or nonpolar. So we've mentioned water. Hopefully, you can see water is going to be partially positive here, and where the oxygen is, it's going to be partially negative. So water is going to be polar. We've mentioned ammonia before, it's going to be partially positive where the hydrogens are located, partially negative next to a lone pair of electrons on nitrogen, so ammonia is polar as well, so that's a P for that one. Next one we have hydrogen fluoride. Fluorine is the second most electronegative element, it pulls all those uh, atoms even more, and this is just two atoms, but this is still a polar bond and a polar molecule. And then the last we have, uh, the last one would be the formula C. F3Cl. So what happens, these fluorines do not have the same pool as the chlorine does, and so this last molecule would be polar as well because those, all those electronegativity differences are not the same between carbon and chlorine versus carbon and fluorine, so they don't cancel. So every single molecule in this drawing is, is polar. The last few examples. In this one I've got the partial negatives and partial positives already drawn in. Let's see if you can identify those. Water, we've mentioned before. Notice it looks like, if you look at water in one direction, it looks like they may cancel. But remember, water is a bent structure. And because of that bent structure, these partial positives and negatives can't cancel. So water is going to be a polar molecule. Another important one that we've looked at is uh, if we see CH3Cl. The Cl has an electronegativity difference. 
that is not the same as the carbon and hydrogen, so the chlorine is a more electronegative part of the atom, and the hydrogen parts is, are a, the more electropositive. So this is a polar molecule as well. Now then for the two molecules that are on the right, now what's interesting about these is we see that they're symmetrical. Like in the carbon dioxide, I'm going to maybe quickly draw a carbon dioxide up here so I can write. What happens is there's a pool of electrons to the right, but there's an equal and opposite pool that is exactly the same to the left. Those cancel. This is symmetrical. Carbon dioxide would be nonpolar because of that symmetrical canceling action of those electrons. So this would be nonpolar here, NP. All right. And then last we have carbon tetrachloride. This would be the formula CCl4. Now in carbon tetrachloride, there are electronegative, there are polar bonds just like in carbon dioxide, but those polar bonds can cancel. And since it's symmetrical and they're able to cancel, this is a nonpolar molecule. So this is a good example of the polar versus nonpolar. And what we see here, every single one of these molecules has a polar bond, but only two of the molecules are polar and two are nonpolar. That's a good summary, and this is a good stopping place. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.